If you're involved in light aeroplane restoration, then you understand what it means to have to scarf together thin sheets of plywood. One or one and a half mil, three millimeter sometimes. The sheets come in 50 inch by 50 inch size and the only way to accomplish a floor which is 8 or 10 or 12 feet long is to join sheets together. A friend has asked me to assist with the uh, restoration of stomp fuselage. Now my background is uh, woodwork machining so I'm used to uh, all the big machines that were involved in woodworking although I have got manual woodworking skills uh, they're limited um, but the first thing I was asked to do was to scarf a sheet of ply I had to make up something eight foot long and it's hard work down on your hands and knees with a flat board using a block plane and a sanding block to achieve that minimum of a 1 in 12 angle it's not easy and it takes a little while to do. Over the years uh, people have improvised and I've seen, uh, in fact I used a uh, finger sanding belt. Um, very frustrating because the, the, the belt kept coming off and you can achieve what you want uh, but it, it's not very satisfactory and it's not really that accurate. You need to take your time to do something like that. One of my early solutions uh, was to make up this, uh, was to modify this angle saw um, with, so the blade is at an angle and the sheet fits in this slot here. You run it through here, you can adjust the thickness of the board here. Uh, the difficulty was as it runs off the saw, it wasn't uh, being held properly. So you got quite a bit of waste at the end of the cut, which I overcome by fitting a, uh, a pressure bearing here so that when the, uh, saw came off the end of the board, it still held the cut section of the board, the cut angle at the end. Um, quite successful, but it, it was better to use this uh, to rough the work out first so that you could finish it by sanding. You didn't get a finished result with, with this. So um, I need what you need is something with a lot more accuracy. Uh, this was my uh, wood machinist's approach to the problem and I produced something which works very effectively, um, judge for yourself, but uh, here it is. It basically consists of two parallel rails with a saddle that fits on them, carrying a drill that drives a disc on the front here with a sanding pad on it. It has to be extremely accurate and you can see from this end here I've actually used a tiny sliver of paper just to raise this end of the bed. When you think about it, dealing with the thicknesses, you have got to be working to within a tenth of a millimetre. To achieve something like this, where the laminations themselves are under a third of a millimetre. So to get this razor feathered edge you're down to a tenth of a millimetre, easily. The machine has to be very solid, so it doesn't waver from the accuracy from one end to the other. One of the early challenges was holding the edge down, so that when you pass the sanding disc along it, it didn't lift. I'm just using little Henry here, little vacuum cleaner, to produce a vacuum in this U section of aluminium. It's over 50 inches long so I can cater 
for a full board. For smaller sections, I may want to scarf. I've got a little shuttle here, which will, which I can move along for smaller pieces. I'm going to set up this uh, piece of board just to a short scarf. So here we are, we have a straight edge. You do need to start with a very straight edge. So either cut with a standing knife or something, get a really good straight edge on it in the first place. And I'm going to place it over the slot here, like this. Now, when I turn the Henry on, you'll see that this is sucked down onto the, uh, onto the seals and it holds it very firmly in position. Now that is very strongly held down. It's amazing actually just how much it holds that down. But it'll hold that in position firmly enough to be able to sand the front edge. And I'll demonstrate that in a moment. So I'm going to set everything in motion. I'm going to cut this short scarf on here. It'll take several passes. It probably only takes a quarter of a millimetre off with each pass. Uh, but I achieve the adjustment with this. Uh, it's actually a vertical, um, uh, a vertical slide off a lathe, which I've adapted to wind the disc down um, very, in very small increments. Um, so I'll start everything up and uh, just observe as I cut this scarf. Okay, well that took about half a dozen passes, but what we've got here is a very, very fine, I mean, that is, that is wafer thin, that edge of the scarf there. And it's some, um, I would say that was about 20, 22 millimeters long on a piece of a uh, uh, mill and a half. Uh, that makes it about one in 14, one in 15, the, the angle. Uh, but that's an acceptable scarf to be able to join that then to another piece cut similarly. You can see how fine that edge has been cut. Very, very, very wafer thin edge without tearing it to pieces. Just an overview of the machine.
I made this disc separately out of aluminium uh, because the foam uh, backing discs that were available were just a little bit floppy. I needed something a little bit more rigid, so I decided to make that up. These extraction tubes here, I've just made those out of uh, electrical conduit tube and that's connected to another Hoover, the melee down here. Henry is the one that supplies the vacuum to hold the board down. You can see how free running the saddle is. Out of the box, these two uh, linear uh, rails weren't actually particularly accurate. I had to bolt them down onto some substantial two inch by two inch aluminium box sections. Here we are. To give it all the rigidity and the straightness that it needs. So that's it. That's my machining solution to what is a fairly arduous manual task. Scarfing thin plywood. Thanks for watching.